Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Colin with Lockdown Movie Reviews. I'll be honest, this one was a gem that I saw with my grandfather a long time ago. And some reason or other, the movies just gave it to me on On Demand. Had it up there as a suggestion. This one is The Violent Men. And I have to say, it is excellent. It's directed by... Rudolf Mate, produced by Louis J. Rochemel. Screenplay is by Harry Cleaner. It was based on Smoky Valley, 1955 novel by Donald Hamilton. It has Glenn Ford, Barbara Stanwyck, Edward G. Robertson, Diane Foster. Brian Keith, May Wynn. It's got an all-star cast for everything in the Western genre, and it is a 1955 American Western. And I love the scenery of it. They talk about how it's Montana and everything, and I can say that they probably did it in Oklahoma. It has some of the strangest things that they ever say in it. It's absolutely wonderful in listening to it it's like you wouldn't hear any of that nowadays like they just had the authenticity of it was just totally great and it's clean and everything there was numerous things talked in it after how they had to try to do medical procedures to people after the civil war People were just going off to try and stay out of the limelight, stay out of the bothersome of everything. Veterans going their own way, everything else. And people are trying to run these people that's bought the land and everything else off so this one huge baron can run out the farmers, run out the other cattle ranchers, and have it all for himself. And he has a... A brother, he, he himself is crippled, and he has a brother that's engaged in an affair with his wife. The daughter knows. She tries telling him and turning him in. He's got a girl in the city, everything else. Complete love triangle throughout it. And yet there's action and adventure, people being alone and being men out there. Remembering their past and everything else with this kind of group of young people that are coming up that really haven't known the war and are kind of like, well, I can make my own way out in rough cattle country or something else. And in and of it, I remember something my grandfather said. Be like, be like Ford. And he is the right amount of violent, and it says the violent men for the title. And he tries to evade every single thing out there, tries to stay to himself, and he's just going to sell it off and take the offers and make some people wait on it. People wouldn't wait on it. Trying to see if anybody came in to sell his ranch, go back east had this hole that wouldn't heal up and this doctor fixed him up. He's going to remove his herd in and sell it off. One of his young ranch hands got shot, killed. They got on their horses and started beating him with the ropes. It's kind of like a lynching out in the middle of um, the plains where there's no trees at, no way to hang anybody. So they beat him with the ropes. You can hear him snap against him, everything else. You can see him hit him across the face and blind him in his eyes like they're supposed to. I will say there's other things you can look up that's more graphic. I mean, it's the movies, and it's a 1950s film. And then you have the end of it where they drag him a little bit and put a bullet in him. And it's very bad, and he was trying to take care of a newborn cow. And they, he ta just told him, 
this wasn't Anchor Land. And that sets off everything. The cattle hands bring him in, try to make charges. It's a dying confession. There's no one there. The sheriff's already met with the main landowner and says, I don't think that's going to be happening right. They want to wait for the guy, everything else. The guy never carries a gun. Ward's character. And he plays it to the perfect ability. They have the long walk over to the saloon. Everything else talks to them. It's like, well, I thought I'd come in here. My boys were wanting to try and do something, and I talked them out of it. Now, it'd be really nice on everybody here, kids, family, everything, if you just turn yourself in over whatever happened. Guy pulls a gun, puts it in his back. He's like, I'm just here for whatever. Guy... Knocks his drink over, pulls his gun. And he had the gun stuck in the back hip pocket. So he threw his jacket up, knocked the guy backwards because he'd never really been in a gunfight. Wasn't anything from war. And he shot him. He tricked him into everything. Told him to do the right thing. Guy was too mad. Wanted to pull his own gun, knew he wouldn't have anything in there, didn't know qu close quarters fighting, anything else. And I mean, if you know anything about military, FBI, police shootouts, it works very well. I don't think the movie ever won an award, but the incidences coming through there, off of it, and just how nice Ford is, but yet, violent. I wouldn't say evil. This is the one time when you can watch a movie and go, he wasn't the evil man. He wasn't anything. His fiance left him. They had been talking to him about leaving and going back east during it. He still never put a gun on for almost the entire time throughout it up until the very end. He let them come to the ranch as they hit out and move the herd off into the rocks and scrub brush. And there's only one way to come in and out. He let them go in and burn the ranch to ground because they couldn't have anything said to them if marauders were burning the ranch. And he had him in all of his hands since they were losing their place where they slept at. Shoot and kill almost all the men. Then the adulterous wife of the antagonist, the owner of Anchor Ranch, her daughter was gone. She had been tired of taking care of him because his legs were useless and said that she was tired of half a man. And... They had some people go over there, set fire to some places from Ford's group on his big, huge ranch. And she wouldn't help him. And she left him there to burn, to go be with the brother she kept convincing to stay around. Well, they got together a posse and everything else said that they came out with all the farmers and everything, started killing all the farmers, everyone else out there, making sure to ride around so that they wouldn't run into Ford and his group. The daughter of the Anchor Land people came over, found her daddy crawling, took him to one of the farmers. He explained everything. He was tied into a saddle and everything else like you would do back in the day. 
and rode in and told everybody they were trespassing on his land, that he was alive and everything. And I want to say it seems like there was almost something real to it, like something that seemed that there was something like that that had happened somewhere. And true enough, the um, brother came out. He drew his gun right at his hip. And it looked like a real gunfight. It's not one shot and everything. He knew he was gone. He knew everybody else was there. So he just kept hitting the hammer right at his hip. And the other guy, Ford's character... And yes, he was, I think, a Confederate um, lieutenant in the war. Shot once, then shot twice, and he was down. The adulterous wife ran out. The girl she had tried to pay to go away that was his fling in town, the uh, adulterous brother, Supposedly was there right at the edge. Fought with her with a gun and shot her and ran off and no one saw. The husband had been taken advantage of in a way, yet was the evil antagonist. He wasn't even really evil. You just say it's a violent way of life. It's truly where violent became an adjective in and of itself. That there is this part between evil and good and a person is just violent and it shows it and then when they're deciding to stay at the ranch at the end of it the daughter of the Anchorland people comes over and asks him if Henry Ford's character if he would work we work my daddy's ranch since he has no hands left. He has so many horses. And they made this huge stampede that you can tell they had a helicopter up for. They're one of the last great, real non cgi stampedes of cattle and horses. Thousands of them out there just running. And cowboys in front of them, heading them off and everything. Like they would do. Excellent, just beautiful, breathtaking. Open scenes. Nothing like you would say the CGI panoramics, but really real and he said and anyway going back I'm sorry I digressed here with some of the cinematography and stuff was just absolutely excellent in it and the horsemanship was real in it it's not like you have some of these green screens or something else like that they actually had real riding horses that people were filming riding the horses and you could see where they would have the camera ran over they would uh, drop the camera here and you know it's cut right there at the right point and I have to say that he said I knew your daddy would end up having my land one way or another basically saying that they're getting married later together so they unified the ranches through a marriage. And I just think that it's kind of the perfect ending. And in a way it shows violence is not evil. It's not good. It's just the violent men. The violent men do move forward, move on. And those that will reach for violence are able to be looked at whether it's in the law is legal or not and I think an unsung hero in this is the character of the sheriff he's kind of the only one that really seems slippery or slimy and at the end of it he goes I thought I was doing good I didn't know And I will say, I would give this one definitely all the way. 
And I know I haven't put in my grandfather's anecdotes. I'll save those for myself. All the way at a nine and a half to ten out there. I know I can't really do ten. But it is absolutely a joy to watch. And like and subscribe. Colin Dawson, Lockdown Movies.